Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Philip Nash, indicted in fatal stabbing of mother. A former Canterbury man has been indicted on charges that he fatally stabbed his mother in May. The Attorney General's office said Monday that Philip Nash is formally charged with two alternative accounts of second-degree murder, one alleging that he knowingly killed his mother and the other alleging that he recklessly caused her death on May 17th in Canterbury. The body of 51-year-old Frances Nash was found four days later. Her son was arrested in Virginia later that day. Nash also has been charged with stealing his mother's car and pickup truck belonging to another man. His public defender was not available for comment today. I-93 closed in Lincoln after serious crash. The northbound side of Interstate 93 in Lincoln was closed for about an hour Monday morning after a serious crash. The highway was closed at exit 3A after an SUV rear-ended a tractor trailer, state police said. The driver of the SUV, Tracy Hackett, 37, of Warner, was injured and taken to Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, police said. A girl in Hatchet's car suffered minor injuries. The driver of the tractor trailer was not injured. Police said they believe Sackett was under the influence of drugs at the time of the crash. She was later charged with aggravated driving while intoxicated. DCYF investigating claims kids kept in cages sexually assaulted, police say. A Totten woman was arrested on Sunday evening after a confrontation with police officer that was assisting the Department of Child and Families in removing three children from her apartment. The Totten Guz reported. Melissa Jean Hope. 34 of East Water Street has been charged with assault and battery on a police officer, according to a police report. According to the report, police were asked to assist DCF in removing the three children in response to allegations that Hope and her husband, Matthew Hope, had both abused and neglected them. Hope, who has since been released from custody, was arraigned in Totten District Court on Monday afternoon by Judge Michael Barron and pleaded not guilty to the assault and battery charge, but was not charged with any further offenses related to the DCF 
allegations, which were also not discussed in court. Court-appointed attorney Lynn will be representing Hope at a potential hearing to be held on November 15. Police were dispatched to Hope's East Water Street apartment at approximately 6.13 p.m. to assist DCF and upon arrival were met with abstents shouted from an open window by Hope and her husband. The report said both stated that police were not allowed in the apartment without a warrant, which prompted police to explain that the emergency situation did not require one. Police soon removed, received approval to force entry into the apartment, asked by Melissa and Matthew Hope to sit down, but only Matthew complied the report. As officers attempted to make their way into the rear of the apartment to locate the children, Melissa Hope then allegedly stood in the middle of the doorway and started, You ain't going anywhere. According to the report, Melissa Hope, who is described in the report as between 200 and 250 pounds and approximately 5 feet 9 inches tall, then grabbed 24-year-old patrol man Nicholas Carey in the area of his throat and neck and pushed him backwards with a significant amount of force. Hope was quickly handcuffed and brought to the station where she was booked without incident and then placed into a female holding cell. The report said Kerr was later determined to have an apparent minor injury. The report added. Maine granted final real ID waiver by federal government. The state of Maine has received a waiver from the federal government for real ID compliance, according to the Maine Secretary of State's office. The waiver means federal agencies will accept Maine's driver's license and identification cards through October 1st, 2020. The current waiver was scheduled to expire October 10th. The Real ID Act was approved in 2005, requiring states to improve security standards for identification cards and driver's license. Governor Paul LePage signed a bill last year requiring the state to comply with the Real ID. The passage of the bill has allowed the state to request waivers so it can implement the new IDs. Once Real ID credentials are available in Maine, those who have a valid regular license or ID will not be required to renew it prior to its expiration date unless they choose to to do so because they need a real ID credential. Beginning October 1st, 2020, those who choose to have a regular license will need a produce a passport or another acceptable identify document for federal purposes that require identification, such as boarding commercial aircrafts, and assessing federal facilities. And now let's take a look at your stock market and see how your stock market did for this Monday evening.
And here's a look at your U.S. stock market for this evening and how it closed. The Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. The Nasdaq closed in the red and went down. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the red and went down. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed in the green and went up. Euro slash USD closed flat. And VIX closed in the red and went down. Dow raises nearly 200 points after the U.S. and Canada strike a deal to replace NAFTA. Stocks closed higher on the first day of the fourth quarter as investors cheered news of Canada joining a trade deal with the United States and Mexico. Trump calls for comprehensive but quick FBI investigation of Kavanaugh. President Donald Trump continued his for support of his Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, calling for a comprehensive but quick FBI investigation into claims of sexual misconduct as the agency works to meet a looming deadline. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday night and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night everyone. Bye.